In this video, we'll look at the concepts of accuracy and precision. So we've looked at sources of error in measurements, random error and systematic error. Now each of these has an effect on your final measurement, on its precision and its accuracy. So systematic error affects accuracy. Accuracy is the difference between your measured value and the true value. Random error affects precision, and it may also affect accuracy. Precision is how close together or reproducible your results are if you measure the same thing several times. The classic analogy here is of arrows in a target. So the first target here shows an archer with high accuracy and high precision, or in other words, low systematic error and low random error. The shots are clustered together, this is like measurements that are very close to one another, and they cluster right on the bullseye, which you could think of as the true value of the measurement. The fact that they're clustered together tells you that they're very precise, they're very close to one another, and the fact that they cluster on the bullseye means that they're accurate, they're hitting the true value, or are very close to the true value. The second box shows an archer with high precision, but low accuracy. So the archer's shots are very reproducible, they cluster, uh, meaning she has low random error. She's probably experienced with skill at reducing the random fluctuations of her own body. However, something is causing a high systematic error. Each of her shots is to the left and below the bullseye. Perhaps there's a steady wind blowing to the left. If she identifies this problem, she can compensate for it. The third box shows an archer with low precision, shown as a wide scattering of shots. Imagine an inexperienced archer, not skilled in reducing the random fluctuations of her body. Or maybe an experienced archer, but on a gusty day with the wind blowing in many directions. However, if these were measurements and we averaged them out, the average would fall fairly close to the bullseye, so the accuracy is quite good. As an experimenter, this is a good example of why you should take many measurements. The more you take, the more likely it is that they'll average out to something useful. The fourth box shows low precision and low accuracy. The shots are scattered, so they're not very precise, and if you averaged them, they would not be near the bullseye. This suggests perhaps an inexperienced archer shooting in a steady wind. The archer's lack of experience produces the random error, and the wind contributes an additional systematic error. OK, so archery is all very well, but let's think about an actual experimental situation. Imagine an experimenter has to repeatedly measure out 200 mils of water during an experiment, and she needs to make sure that each sample is as close to 200 mils as she can get it. Pause the video and read the four scenarios here, and think about potential random and systematic errors for each one. Decide whether the accuracy will be high or low in each case, and whether the precision will be high or low. OK, so let's go through them. In the first situation, she uses a 1 litre beaker to measure her 200 mils, and it's a cheap, poorly calibrated one at that. Measuring 200 mils in a 1 litre beaker is difficult because the gradations are far apart, and the beaker is so wide that small differences in the height of the water translate to a large difference in the volume. Sometimes the volumes will be a bit above the 200 mil mark, and sometimes they'll be below. So that means a large random error, and hence the precision is going to be low. In addition, however, we're told that the beaker is poorly calibrated. The manufacturer has perhaps not checked the gradations on the side. Perhaps where the 200 mil mark is, is actually 250 mils. So this would lead to a systematic error, and hence to low accuracy. This is the worst possible situation. In the second situation, things have improved a bit. She's using at least a good quality piece of glassware, uh, so we hope that it's well calibrated, and it's closer to the volume that she wants to measure. This makes it more likely that the 200 mil mark actually represents 200 mils. However, it's still a beaker. As before, the large diameter of the container means that very small differences in the height of the water mean large changes in the volume, which means that the measurements will still have a large random error. If she measures out many, many samples, these variations should average out, but it's not an ideal situation. In the third situation, she's changed glassware. She's now using a measuring cylinder. This piece of equipment is designed for measuring volumes of liquid precisely. 
a measuring cylinder has much more finely spaced gradations than a beaker and it's narrower, so you can more easily make small adjustments to the volume of the liquid. So in this situation, the random error is low. She will be precise. However, there's a problem. She's measuring hot water. Now, as you know, matter expands when it heats up and it contracts when it cools down, so its volume changes with temperature, and water's no exception. Every time she measures out 200 mL of hot water and then lets it cool down, she'll actually have a smaller volume than she thought, and this will cause a systematic error. All of her volumes will be smaller than she had thought, so her accuracy will be low. Now it's worth noting here that volumetric glassware like measuring cylinders and burettes and volumetric flasks are calibrated to be used at room temperature, usually 20 or 25 degrees C, for precisely this reason. And in fact, most measuring instruments will have a temperature range in which they are most accurate because of the expansion and contraction of matter with temperature. OK, in our final situation, she's finally got it right. She's using the right kind of glassware, so her random error is reduced and she has eliminated the systematic error caused by using hot water, so her accuracy should be good. In this situation, her volumes will cluster closely around 200 mils.